Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. Today I want to cover some of the amazing countries that are allowing Americans in during this time in COVID. Right now it is March 2021 and these are some of the most popular countries that will let us in. Let's go. All right, so this information that I'm going to share with you today is from US News, the latest travel news. And this is not an exhaustive list of all of the countries that are allowing Americans in. However, these are some of the more popular countries that I thought uh, might be the most interested uh, into my viewership. However, I will link that article below. So if you'd like to explore other potential countries that you can visit, uh, I will have that below. So please feel free to take a look. Also, remember, it is currently March 2021. This information could absolutely change because as you know, as more vaccines reach around the world, more and more places hopefully will open up to us. So make sure before you go to a country to always check with their visitors bureau to make sure you have the most up-to-date information because more countries might open, but also some of these countries might close. You never know. But this is the current state of the countries we are allowed to visit. So let's go ahead and dive in. All right, the first one I want to talk about, because uh, we actually have quite a few islands that we're allowed to go to. The first one I want to talk, to about, talk to you about is Antigua and Barbuda. I know I'm saying that wrong, and I apologize to everybody, <laughs> but Antigua and Barbuda, um, this is what they require if you should, would like to visit their um, country this summer, this spring break, whenever it is that you'd like to go. Right now, they are currently requesting a negative COVID test within seven days. So as long as you test negative within seven days of your arrival into the island, um, that is what they want. That is for 12 years and up, 12 year olds and up. Also, when you arrive, you will be receiving a temperature check and a health uh, assessment. And then um, there's also a health declaration that you will fill out on your flight into into the uh, country. You also will be required to wear masks in public. Uh, and then if you are symptomatic, there will be a quarantine. If, if you get to the airport and they find that you're symptomatic, there will be a quarantine that they would make you do. But otherwise, if you're un, non, un, I'm not saying it right, but if you don't have any symptoms and you have the negative test, you should be free to explore. But again, wearing masks in public and things of that nature. All right, the next one is Aruba. And in Aruba, it's also bringing a negative COVID test. This one has to be within 72 hours of your arrival, anytime within there. And this is for 15 year olds and up. There is a health form and an assessment. Um, now, some states might require more testing. For instance, California, we've had high spikes this whole time. So they might require more testing for Californians. Uh, other states that might have high or, or volatile numbers in COVID, they might require more for them. So be sure to check with Aruba's uh, Vacation and Visitors Board before you go so that you know what requirements are, are necessary for your particular state. And then also, this is a new trend that I'm seeing. A lot of countries are requiring a certain health insurance coverage. Sometimes it's sponsored by the country and you just buy it with through the country. Sometimes they want you to show a policy that you've bought in your home country, but that covers you in their country. And this is to help cover any emergency medical needs. If you get sick while you're there, if you need health care while you're there, this is to help protect them and make sure that any foreigners coming in are covered and will be able to get health uh, coverage, health access to health coverage when they're there. So Aruba is no different. Aruba has visitors insurance that you buy through Aruba. The price varies. As of right now, they're saying the, the price for anyone age 15 and over is about $30. Anybody under 15 is only about $10, but it varies. So make sure you check before you go because these numbers might change. Next, I want to talk about the Bahamas. Bahamas is the same uh, in a lot of ways. They actually require a travel health visa. Now, this visa is for anybody 18 and over. The price is, depends on between $40 and $70, depending on what country you are coming from and how long you'll be staying. Uh, they also require a negative test. It needs to be within five days of your arrival, and that is for anybody 11 years old and over. They have a uh, health insurance opt-in, which is part of that travel visa. So when you buy the travel visa, you can opt in to their health insurance. It's not an additional fee. It's part of the fee. And then if you stay longer than five days, you have to test again. 
So if you have to have your negative test to, to get there within five days to get there, and then if you stay there for more than five days, they want another test. If you stay less than five days, just, just the entry test is all that you need. All right, next is Belize. Belize is a negative COVID test within 72 hours. They did not indicate the age range for that, so be sure to check before you go. And then also they have a health form on their Belize health app that you would need to fill out, and that's all for Belize. Bermuda, Bermuda wants a negative COVID test within five days. And then once you arrive, you have to test again. There will be a short quarantine during that test when you arrive while you're waiting for your test results. Usually it's within 24 hours. So you might only have to spend one night in quarantine and then you should have your results and be able to travel about uh, the island. Uh, they also want a travel authorization form, which is $75. And then once you get that, you wear a wristband for the first 14 days of your stay. If you stay beyond two weeks, you don't have to wear the band. But the first 14 days, you have to have the wristband and that travel authorization form for $75. That's Bermuda. Moving on to the British Virgin Islands, they would like a negative COVID test within five days. They also have an online travel um, certificate, I believe it's called that you have to have to, to travel to the British Virgin Islands. This one is $175. And then, so not only do you have to have the negative test to get in, but also once you're there, there needs to be a second test taken on your fourth day of your visit. So if you're only there for the weekend for three days, you don't have to take that second test. But if you stay there for four days or longer, you have to take a second test. And then of course, if it comes back negative, then you're free, you're free to continue to travel about the, the Virgin Islands, the British Virgin Islands. All right, moving on, let's go down to Costa Rica. Costa Rica has a digital health pass, is what it's called, uh, that they have to they ask you to fill out. Um, you have to have a negative COVID test within 48 hours of your arrival into Costa Rica. And then also you have to buy health insurance, and that would be through their website that you would have to buy their health insurance. And that you could just search for Costa Rica, but it, their link is also below in that article, that news article that I've linked below. Moving over to Europe, we have Ireland. Now, technically, Ireland is encouraging uh, people who are non-essential um, to not travel, but they're not necessarily stopping you either. So this is kind of a tricky, a tricky one. So if you're going to go later in the summer or in the fall, hopefully they are fully open at that time. But if you're wanting to travel right now during spring break or early summer, you got to kind of gauge it. Right now they're really encouraging only essential travelers, but they aren't necessarily excluding. They're just, it's just an encouragement. So if you choose to go, they want a negative COVID test within 72 hours. Uh, then they want to you to quarantine, either, either you have to quarantine for a full two weeks, 14 days, or you have to take a second test after five days. So you would need to quarantine those five days, take another test, and then if you're negative, then you're, you're free to move about the island. Uh, but, or you can quarantine for the full 14 days. And again, they advise against non-essential travel. So make sure you're checking with that country before you travel, but this might be one of the few European nations that are allowing us in at the moment, at the moment. All right, let's move over uh, to the Maldives since we're on an island uh, kick. It seems just to have a lot of islands are allowing us in right now. Excuse me. Maldives requires a negative test within 96 hours of your arrival. They, you have to have proof of paid accommodation. Uh, so you can't just show up and say, oh, yeah, I'll find a place to stay. You have to have proof that you've actually made arrangements for your hotel, resort, whatever it is that you're doing. You have to have proof of that. Uh, and then they also say if you go past the Malay area, and again, I, sorry, I'm sorry if I'm completely devastating that name, but if you are staying outside of the Malay area, um, you have to stay in Malay for at least 10 days as a, as a quarantine before you're allowed to travel outside of that. So if your plans do include traveling around, you need to plan to stay in Malay at least for 10 days, and then you're free to go about the rest. All right, moving on to Mexico. Currently, Mexico does not require a negative COVID test to enter. However, they do have a health screening that they will put you through. Uh, they also only are allowing travelers by air 
that are non-essential. So if you're non-essential, you can only enter via air. You can't cross the border in your car or, or it doesn't, it, I don't even think you can go on a cruise ship. I think you need, it has to be by air only. Um, and then there are some cities, depending on where you go, that have certain curfews and restrictions. So you will want to look at your city that you're going to be visiting before you go and make sure you understand what those restrictions may or may not be. And then uh, some areas, <clears throat> there are cases on the rise. So you also want to check that as well. Uh, they just aren't getting the the vaccines or they're just not being able to handle it as well. And some, some cases are on the rise. So you might not want to travel to those particular areas unless perhaps you are fully vaccinated already. All right, moving on to other Latin areas. Uh, Puerto Rico is allowing us in. They want a negative test within 72 hours of your arrival. There is a travel declaration form that they ask you to fill out and they have a curfew between 11 p.m. and 5 a.m. And again, most of these countries also are going to ask for your mask. And of course, you're going to need your mask for air travel anyway. So make sure you plan to travel with those items as well. All right, let's move over to Asia. South Korea is allowing us in. Uh, they request a negative test within 72 hours. However, they do have a 14 day quarantine requirement. So if you really, really want to go to South Korea, you need to stay longer than uh, two weeks because you have to quarantine for 14 days. They also have a daily health questionnaire that they will be sending to you. Um, it doesn't say how. I'm assuming it's either uh, some form of app, perhaps, or maybe they check in with you, but you will have to submit that daily health questionnaire. Alrighty, so there are. this is just a snippet of some of the more popular areas that I found in this article. There are other uh, places, including other islands like Turk and, Turks and Caicos, uh, St. Kitts, et cetera. There's some African nations, United Arab Emirates, the Ukraine, and, and more. So if you are looking to go to other places uh, that, uh, again, I, I chose the ones that are a little more popular, but if you're wanting to do some of those um, a little bit more, uh, not exotic, but places that aren't as heavily traveled, uh, please see that article and it will give you the information on those islands and what they're requiring and links to their country's websites as well. And again, this is information just as of March of 2021. As the vaccine spreads, I am positive all of this will change, including the possibility that if you're vaccinated, you simply bring your vaccination card and you might be able to get into more places. I don't know. So please make sure any before you travel, always check that information. And even if you're checking that information today and say you're traveling in July, make sure you keep up with that information all the way through because likely it's going to change by the time July comes. So make sure you're always checking in. Alrighty, so I hope you find that helpful. If you'd like to learn more about your uh, vacation planning, saving money, uh, different things, go ahead and check out these videos here. And other than that, I hope you have a fantastic day and I will see you on the next video. Bye-bye.